Right, let's start this video off with a question. And the question is, how many of you carry a seven wood in your bag? I'm gonna reckon that, uh, I'm gonna go as high as 75% uh, of you don't carry one. And the reason you don't carry one is probably for all the wrong reasons. And I reckon you think it's a bit of a, uh, let's go old man's club, girly club, a bit sexist that one, but that's the kind of mentality that we have when we think of seven woods. And I reckon you've got it completely wrong. I think more average golfers should have one of these clubs in a bag. Today, I'm gonna to look at what I think are two of the very best that I've tested in recent months, and that's the Ping G425 Max 7 Wood and the PXG Gen 4 7 Wood. And I'm gonna try with numbers to persuade you that you should be considering having one of these in the bag. I think always a good marker for any average golfer, any club golfer, is to look at what's happening on the uh, ladies' tours. And if you look at the top players in the ladies' ranks, you'll see they all carry a five and seven wood. But then if you take that one step further, any of you got problems with them and look at the fact that Dustin Johnson put one in his bag fairly recently, hopefully that kind of stigma that's attached to these kind of clubs is starting to be removed away. And the thing for me is, and again, it's obviously all is relative to your own club head speed and swing speeds, but for me, these were clubs that I found were sort of an easy 190 carry, great launch angles, decent spin conditions, clubs that you could play into long par threes, into tight par fours, shorter shaft than obviously the 5.3 and your driver and those confidence boosting clubs that everybody should have in the bag. So the question is, why is it still that I think 75% of you haven't got them in the bag? Right, the question you've got to ask yourself is why would you gain this kind of club 7 wood and what are your options in this kind of distance? So for me, um, I can either use a 4 iron, which is very similar in terms of the yardage carry. I can use a hybrid, which is again, is similar. And the, the, the thing for me about a seven wood is in both occasions is where it has the edge is the bulk and mass just suggests that there's, even if it's only a mental thing, there's a little bit more power packed into that club, a little bit more assistance, that overall mass just helps get that ball out there. And the mere fact that with the size ahead, they can place that CG so far back also suggests that it's gonna help me in launching the ball. And launching a four iron is not easy, Again, a hybrid does help, there's no doubt, but for me, the seven wood has that extra bit of help and forgiveness that makes it a no-brainer when it comes for me to choose four iron, hybrid, or seven wood, then for me, the easy option is to always reach for that seven wood. Right, so why are these the two clubs that I've put in question in terms of the Ping and the PXG? Well, it's simply because for me, there are very few companies that offer a seven wood in the range, and those who do, I think these are two of the very best that are out there. Uh, but there are major differences between the both of them, um, one thing being price, and we'll mention that towards the end, but the other issue is the way these things look. They've both got this kind of matte finish on the top, but this PXG has gone with this sort of new white um, shape, if you like, on the top of the crown, which is very uh, dividing in terms of opinion. So that's something you've got to change your mindset over. Um, the second thing is the way they sit at the dress. The ping is very much a sort of flat, shallow head, almost like a sort of squashed uh, wood, if you like. And then the PXG is this much more stubbier looking uh, kind of club, much more chunkier in its profile. And to me, it's a bit of a throwback to the sort of uh, the woods that I would have used 20 years ago in terms of their profile, to be honest with you. Right, so a slight change of plan there, interrupted mid-flow, but we decided to come outside because one of the things that's difficult is uh, to test the clubs in terms of their sound and ultimately their feel. Uh, inside gets a little bit echoey so we've come outside and you're going to watch me play just a couple of shots of each and see what you think of in terms of sound I'll shut up for a second or two and we'll just play those couple of clips and first two with the ping and the second two with the PXG and hopefully if we've got the audio it, uh, right you should notice a bit of a difference Right, well I've not heard them, you have, uh, but certainly playing them out here, they are really, really different. It's kind of like the, uh, the, there's only one criticism I've had of the Ping G425 range, it's a very personal one, and it's just how hard they are in terms of off the face, and uh, the PXG is a lot softer. And again, it's just a difference in preference, but it's a minor, minor difference, but it is, it is there, it is very, very noticeable. And like I said, other than that and the way they look, the other major differences, I think that's it. We'll now go back inside where I've got a little bit of a, uh, a challenge set up and we'll see how they go on in a little bit of a head-to-head. -head. Right, so a little competition time, like I said, and uh, I'm not sure when this video will go out, but Quail Hollow is where Rory uh, got a victory last night, his first one for a couple of years, so... Uh... <laughs> it's 
someone's having a rough time in the bay next door. Anyway, we've got a, a set up par three, it's 195 yards. Um, small little green to hit, we'll give it a whirl and see, uh, we'll get three shots each and see which one comes out on top in, uh, when, when it matters, I suppose. Right, we'll go ping first. Bit. It's a bit off the bottom, bit of a low one. I don't think it's probably done better than uh, probably done better than I thought. To be quite honest with you, I had no right to get there. That's probably the good thing about these clubs is they do far better than they should have. The best start for ping. Right, come on, and better ball. Oh, it's a better knock, but just tug down that left hand side a bit. Not not the greatest start for ping at the moment, but to be fair to them, uh, the couple of swings I've put on put on are not great. So uh, right, let's see if we can finish with a better ball. It's better, but it's still down that left hand side. Yeah, we're struggling. We've not hit a green. I'm sorry, ping. I didn't uh, I didn't do you any favours there. Right, over to PXG and see how they can get on. And to be honest with you. If they can stick a ball on the green, then uh, well, they've won. Simple task. I'm just going to say before I actually swing this, there's a massive feeling to me in the way these two swing in terms of uh, their, how I feel ahead through it, through through the swing. I've got a hazardous smoke, um, I think it's a 70 gram, yeah, a 70 gram stiff shaft in this. And I've got a uh, CB Alta 65 gram stiff uh, in the, uh, the 720, uh, 425. There's a huge difference in the way they feel through the swing. And again, that's something that uh, is down to the individual. Right, here we go. Oh, that's a decent ball. That's a decent ball. I'm afraid that's a, that's a bit of a, a victory already. That's game over in terms of the competition because uh, that'll take some beating either way. But it's certainly on the base of this on the green, competition is over. Right, here we go, next one. You know what, that's not the best of balls, but again, it seems to carry on out there. It's incredible, you know, how well these things. I mean, that's that's such a good finish for what I actually put on it in terms of swing and contact with the club. Can we go three from three? A bit of a rarity in these uh, in these situations. We'll give it a go. Oh, that's a decent ball, just right of flag, I think. Actually, right of centre, cutting a little bit. That's not bad, you know. I think that's what you'd call, uh, yeah, a bit of a whitewash in terms of PXT. But don't forget, just a bit of fun. That was arguably down to three horrible swings I put on with the ping. And uh, a bit better, to say the least, in terms of the PXT. That's a fun bit over. They all perform, like I said, uh, incredibly well in terms of dry ball data. So let's finish off by having a look at that. And what might make you decide to buy one or the other if any but certainly why you should be considered putting a seven wood of some sort in your bag i reckon right so i think the uh, overriding thing is that uh, from my perspective it's this positivity towards seven woods in general i think they're incredible uh, tool to have in the bag it's that simple um the data i'm about to show you is all around sort of my top end swing so uh, full out and i think that's again something worth mentioning because i think there is that ability to take a little bit off these, swing a little bit easier and vary the distance quite a lot. And the other thing that you can change is the loft, don't forget, which I think is also really important when you're looking at gapping that top end of the bag. So whether you're looking to replace a, a six iron, a five iron or a four iron with a seven wood, depending on obviously your kind of carry distances, it gives you that ability to do it by changing the loft quite significantly. Um, I think what I'll do, I'll just throw the set of averages up on, uh, on screen for you now. And you've got 88 uh, or thereabouts club head speed, 130 ball speed, four and a half thousand spin give or take, 196 and 194, 15 and 14 launch, 98, 95 peak height. A descent angle of 44.8 as opposed to 44.7. And then the easiest thing to say, like I said, is that they just have got no, the only difference between those two sets of numbers and where you'll see variables is again, my swing. In terms of performance, they were almost identical in every way. Um, so it goes back to what I said earlier. Now, uh, let's put the dispersion charts up again. Um, blue being that a PXG, red of the ping. 
If you argue the toss, maybe the PXG is a slightly better grouping. I would argue that maybe I just put some better swings on with that club than I did at the ping because they're the variables in reality that you're going to do out there on the course as an average golfer. So the way for me to summarise this is your choice of this is about a budget's massive because of the, the pricing difference is still... This is PXC's premium line, and although it's been reduced significantly, the 7 Wood is still £445, so it still carries a real heavy price tag for a 7 Wood. And you compare that to the Ping, and it's 269 So that's a huge, huge difference, and based on the performance factors alone, then there's no reason why you justify the PXC over the Ping. The only differences are, and the differences are, are these things I spoke about earlier on a personal level and highlighted through the video, was A, the way you think they look aesthetically. And when I say aesthetically, I'm not on about, um, maybe aesthetically is the wrong word, because I'm talking about the way they sit at the dress, because they're very, very different in the sort of, uh, the profile of the club. They're, not, they're hugely different. And then the second thing is, which again is hugely different, is the sound. My only criticism throughout all the ping range has been the sound of the G425s, and it's a lot softer in the PXG. But they're the differences, and whether you, you, you might determine that completely the other way around for you in terms of what you prefer in terms of looks and feel. So it is, like I said, down to personal preferences. What the only overriding thing I'll say is going back to the very beginning, whichever one you choose, and there's a few other options out there, there aren't many, like I said, who are offering seven months, um, is really consider putting one in the bag. Because for me, like I said, those numbers are around my sort of my optimum number with a four iron, and that's when I really get one out the middle. When you see the numbers at the end in terms of the dry ball data, those numbers have virtually gone around every time, and that's the interesting point for me. We highlighted it with the five woods in a previous video that was about to come out uh, earlier this week, I think it did actually, whereby you, whatever you're putting something, some club on ball, the performance seems incredibly consistent across that club face, and it's the same with these seven woods. If I did that with a four iron, I reckon it'd be a completely different story. Anyway, that's it. Uh, no need to waffle on anymore. As ever, thanks for watching. Uh, always comment down below. And also, if you can hit that like button, it's a massive help in terms of uh, boosting the uh, whatever algorithm that YouTube asks us uh, to, to comply to. Anyway, I will see you all very soon.